What's going on guys? I'm Bizzer aka Bizzer Hacks. This time we're going to talk about Crow Falls patch 5.81. This is one of two patches we have been expecting to see before alpha version 6.0. Let's go over the changes and let's get right into it. One of the first things you'll notice is they wiped all of our characters and our spirit banks. They did this in order to address some exploits that were going on with the game and they had no other choice. So we're starting fresh guys. Another big change will be for anyone that uses EKs. You'll notice your EK has been completely reset. Anything that you have purchased for imports will also be reset, meaning you'll have to re-import them to your character and to your EK. Next, we'll go through a list of general campaign changes. First thing they did was they added a bunch of training dummies to all beachheads on all campaigns. So whether you're a healer or a DPS, there's a dummy for you to practice on. The siege timer now will correctly show when the next siege is going to occur. Vendors will now inherit parcel factions, making them interactable with all players in the free city. They fixed an issue with spawning near the dragon statues in the starting area, so you should no longer spawn in the air. Simberg was missing in neutral city parcels. Jotun re-randomized to fix a canyon without an entrance. Rune gates leading to the faction temples have had their keep out pulse turned on. Rune gate parcels factions have been changed so that their beams of light show up in the game. Scoreboards in the map menu now should correctly show all guilds. Unlocking a character from campaigns no longer deselects it and chooses the first from the list. Tutorial area hunger shards no longer decimate the player's food pool. Open world hunger crystals now match the tutorial hunger shards in both food decrement amount and protection from additional ticks. Resources increase for ores, but decrease for trees when buying from vendors. Reduced ranks for generated worlds so that the seasons can increase them. Fix floating rocks in a hill parcel. Fix for resource POI chests so that they are back to their original size. Fix for error in Fort Annex Tower's destruction. Capture bonus systems have been integrated. This means that the bonus amount is granted for longevity of captured points. Updated the campaign season's configuration to include scoreboard data to support the new capture bonus. Implemented the new tooltips for capture locations on the map. Updated positioning for fort guards for better visibility and protection. Several updates and rebalancing have been done to adjust the catch-up mechanic and capture bonus for outposts, forts, and keeps. Next we're going to talk about specifically some updates to items and crafting. The first change is one of the largest. They've reduced the minimum and maximum damage amounts for all advanced weapons. This will make fights longer in some situations, but will decrease the gap between intermediate and advanced weapons. Runic Weapon Blade should no longer be able to be used on advanced weapon crafting. A lot of crafting items have their XP reduced when sacrificing. This is a big impact on players because they used to sacrifice frames for levels. Now these options aren't there for quick and easy levels. They fixed an issue with Mushroom Kebabs. They also removed all craftable mounts from the game. For now, we just have our two legs to get around on. The buffs that are provided by crafting stations in keeps for Thrall buffs now also provide a dizzy immunity and a 50% damage reduction as part of this buff. Fix the bug wherein determining an item's XP value for crafting, if there was a sacrifice override value, it would double count the stack size. A balancing pass and rework on the outcome amount on several Geomancy architecture component recipes has been done. Geomancy recipes no longer give multiple stacks upon creation of carpentry nails, shingles, floor tiles, bricks, and other components. Now one last thing is apples now stack in 200. This wasn't in the patch notes, we're not sure if other food does yet, but that's a super sweet change that's not noted. Next I want to talk about changes to mobs and NPCs. First, wolves should now drop wolf meat and strong hide. Fixing Aarch loot tables so now they give out the proper loot instead of elk meat and the correct hide. Harvesting an Aarch should now give soft leather and Aarch meat. Significant changes have been made to the guards in forts and keeps. They now have significantly more hit points and use a variety of exotic arrows that have CC functionality associated with them. I now want to talk about some changes that have been made to the chat. General chat will stop showing up as a channel anymore. The player will have a lobby channel while they're in the lobby. When they enter a zone, they will have a faction channel and a zone channel. Next I want to talk about some changes to general powers. Ultimate powers no longer provide a complete invulnerability. They now apply a damage prevention barrier equal to 35% of your maximum hit points. Abilities infected include Shadow Step, 
Neckbreaker, Invincible Warrior, Divine Order, Miracle, Immolation, Death Surge, Essence Scram, Dynamite, Vanish, Whirling Leap, Raging Bull, Sustain, and Brilliance. There was a UI change to the Rage Regeneration amounts. They will now show up in the Details section. Some changes were made to Discipline Powers. Shield Fighter, Melon Labe, will now only reflect damage from targets who cause elemental damage to you, not healing. There were a number of changes to Race Powers. Centaur, Strength of the Legion, should fully apply full value no matter on the group size. Hippocratic Oath should apply full value no matter on the group size as well. For Half Giant, Blood of the Giant no longer applies damage immunity, but now applies a damage preventing barrier equal to 20% of your maximum hit points for 1.65 seconds. There were a number of changes to class powers. The first is the Assassin. Backstab can now be placed on the stealth tray. For the Fusion and Poison Toxin, they removed a damage scaler that was causing the damage to increase at an alarming rate. Yaga's Gift now has a passive icon when loaded out into the tray. For Champion, they made some changes to Ultimate Warrior, Brutal Warrior, and Mighty Warrior. They no longer apply a damage immunity, but now apply a damage preventing barrier equal to 20% of their maximum hit points for 1.65 seconds. There were changes to the Confessor as well. Splitting Distance is now permanently equipped when the talent box is purchased without consuming a passive power slot. They changed the description of Splitting Distance to indicate 7 meters to better match the Recticle. They changed the Recticle. It doesn't do a good job reporting space. They changed the description of Splitting Distance to indicate 7 meters to better match the Recticle. Feel the Burn will no longer trigger erroneous dot application, causing targets to burn forever. Feel the Burn no longer triggers off of dot damage. Feel the Burn proc rate adjusted to 10% chance on fire damage application. Promotion passives now have icons. Basic attacks 1 and 2. Both damage attacks was incorrectly set to an old animation timing. Damage now correctly is set higher. Condemnation now deals special damage instead of AoE damage. Absolution weapon damage and base damage was set too low for 5 stacks of sin. Redemption damage values were slightly lower than they should have been. A few changes were made to the Druid. Promotion passives now have icons. Coalesced Life, they removed an amount scaler that was incorrect, being applied to all orb types if the player had a talent flow of nature. The Duelist, there was a few changes to Pepper Box and Impale. They removed a damage scaler that was causing the damage to increase at an alarming rate. Myrmidon, they fixed the Whirlwind ability, where canceling the Whirlwind no longer makes other powers stop dealing damage for 1-5 to five seconds. Ranger, they made a few changes as well. Traps should all have different icons now, and the Booby Trap passive now has an icon. There was one change made for Templar. They updated the Profound Devotion talent description to indicate that it scales with support power. There were a number of bug fixes with this patch as well. They fixed multiple race conditions that were causing avatars to not be shown or hidden correctly when changing selections in the character creation screen before the avatar had finished initializing. They also fixed an issue where switching between avatars with the same race-gender combination would not correctly make the avatar visible after the first attempt. They fixed an issue that would cause frequent disconnects during the zone transfer in some regions. They fixed an issue where resurrection would cause a problem with interacting with items for approximately 6 minutes. The search field in the campaign window in the lobby should now function. They fixed an issue where double jump and dodge animations were played incorrectly. They removed an ally shader from character tint skin. After a deed had been placed from a stack, only one of the two stacks of deeds can get placed in the spirit bank. You cannot input both stacks from split deeds in the spirit bank. Players can no longer kill themselves when taking off armor with Death Shroud active. They fixed an issue where the lobby UI would get an odd state after a player disconnects from Wi-Fi. They added a message on login per play session per campaign where in there are less than 72 hours left in the campaign, they remind the player to put the stuff in the spirit bank. Made the combat log filter text log objects like other chat tabs. Fixed bug with vessel preview in lobby staying on screen, we're going back to the mode select. Fixed the bug where character on accounts that have been renamed, they will not be able to be invited to groups. Added proper messaging for players who don't have enough funds in their coffer for upkeep costs on vendor shops so players can pay and not lose their items. Last but not least, there are much nicer settings for anti-aliasing and ambient occlusion that make grass look a thousand times better. Enjoy!
That includes everything for the patch notes for 5.8.1, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. Comment below on what you guys think was the most important change this patch. And as always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you like Crowfall videos. And thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys in game.